So now we're going to take a quick look at the LM393 integrated circuit. So there's two comparators. We're only going to use one out of two and we're going to wire it up as a non-inverting comparator. When you look at the actual component, it's in the uh, dual inline package or DIP. And uh, the number one is to the left uh, right there. And then we got the uh, ground pin over there. We jump over to the right there. We got the number two comparator right there and the positive supply up there. That's uh, commonly how things are numbered on integrated circuits. Start at the top left, one, maybe two, and then, you know, maybe even higher. And then uh, after you get there, you jump to the right. So now we got two, uh, but if there was four, it'd be one, two, three, four, and so on. That's the numbering system too for the pins, one to four, and then five to eight. Keep going down however long you need to, if it is longer. One thing to be aware of with this integrated circuit, since we're down here, um, according to the data sheet I read a long time ago, it can only sync about 16 milliamps of current, and that is all that it does. It just syncs current. So the output is, uh, since it's open collector, there's other uh, transistors where it's open drain, um, but this has an NPN bipolar junction transistor. So it's open collector, and uh, it either connects around or it doesn't. That is important to uh, realize. So it doesn't have a high output in the sense of five volts or you know three and a half volts whatever be an output because they don't usually output the full five volts anyway some do um at low currents but others do not this one doesn't output five volts at all it does connect the ground though uh, pretty well um but again you're not supposed to put a lot of current uh through it so we'll come back to that later non-inverting comparator because the inverting input has a reference voltage that's fixed it's going to stay the same as long as the supply voltage stays the same um, but main thing is it's half the supply voltage, 2.5 volts right there. We have a trim pot which you can manually adjust. And um, so we can go all the way down to zero volts, all the way up to uh, five volts. We go halfway, that's 2.5 volts. And uh, there's no hysteresis here, uh, which means we would uh, feed the output there to kind of lock it in place a little bit more. So we have to go a little bit more out of our way to uh, switch it, especially uh, when it comes to going up because again, it doesn't all put high, but we do have that pull-up resistor um, So we're not gonna worry about that right now. Just uh, we have a pretty solid we're either above 2.5 volts or below 2.5 volts and uh, The circuitry will do the rest as I said doesn't connect to uh, 5 volts very good But connects the ground pretty good. So our solution with that is a pull-up resistor and uh, especially when you're switching a transistor Probably still a good idea to add that. When we are going to ground, that's sharing uh, ground with other circuitry and stuff. And uh, we may kind of get weak signals going to the open collector. So um, probably best to have the pull-up resistor. That's going to overpower any weak uh, signals that may uh, cause interference. Transistors and amplifier, weak signals may get it, you know, conducting a little bit. Um, so. May need it, may not need it. Uh, but in case, generally it's probably a good idea to have a pull-up resistor there. Or you could just turn a load on uh, by having the load be where this 10K resistor is. And then uh, when the output's low there, uh, current will flow right there. That could turn it on. But instead we're gonna look at the PMP bipolar junction transistor. So that turns on when the output is low. So again, LED is still gonna turn on when the output's low, whether we come from the positive supply or through the transistor, but as I said before, it's only uh, intended to sync about 16 milliamps of current. Um, so that was according to the data sheet I read a long time ago, typical. And uh, LEDs, you uh, may want to, you know, do 20 milliamps if you need a red LED really bright or something. Um, but in any case, might as well just use a transistor. It can switch the 2N3906 up to 200 milliamps of current. So we can swap out this load with a load that needs like 100 milliamps. I still try to stay halfway below the uh, maximum current that uh, transistor will switch as much as I can. So output goes low, you get a tiny bit of emitter to base current uh, through the 10K resistor. That's ultimately what's gonna set uh, this current uh, for the most part. And then to ground, fairly good connection to ground, low current, um, but that allows many, many times, probably 200 times or more uh, current to go from emitter to base, at least 100 times as much. That's the main thing. And um, so 10K will provide plenty of uh, current to get 100 times, you know, one one hundredth of what we're gonna need uh, over there. Hopefully that makes sense. So setting current with the 220 ohm resistor. All we're doing, 
with the comparator is controlling the transistor and the pull-up resistor will help hold it off. So now, I figured we would do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit. We have the dual inline packet, so that's the LM393 right there. You gotta look at the uh, part number, and I'm gonna do this uh, for beginners, so I'm gonna uh, kinda go slow. So we have uh, the part number on there, so LM393 right down there. And there's uh, usually other numbers, maybe that's the date it was made or something, the uh, factory. Um, you got to look at data sheets to see why and you got to make sure you look up the uh, manufacturer that actually made it right there because uh, usually different manufacturers make it so again positive uh, supply to the top right and then negative supply to the top left that's good to get that out of the way before you start wiring everything else up helps guide we're gonna just ignore uh, number two right there probably it's good to give a voltage to the uh, inputs that we're not using to help stabilize things but I don't think we absolutely need it again check the data sheet for their recommendations um, some integrated circuits they um, you see like current on the power supply when there should be none um, if you just leave inputs floating and uh, I don't believe that would be the case with this one. and again I probably don't have light in the best spot um, so let's uh, let's slide it over again again I'm gonna make this for absolute beginners so we're going to kind of go slow. There we go, 2N3906, and again, the uh, B341, um, it, it tells you information, but you got to look at the data sheet to see why. So, um, I didn't write the pin layout on, on this sheet that I wrote, but if it starts with 2N and it's a bipolar junction transistor, whether uh, NPN or PNP, then I find that uh, left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base, and then right pin is the collector. So to get the emitter to the positive supply, we'll swivel it that way. Now the emitter is on top right there, and uh, we plug it in. And uh, the emitter goes to the uh, supply voltage when you are using it as a switch. Also notice I cut all power um, from the board right there while I wire this up. I don't uh, usually do that, but that's what you should do. And then uh, we got the trim pot for our signal voltage right there, three pins. Middle pin is the wiper. Um, some trim pots, um, the uh, the wiper, what slides across the resistive uh, element, may be in a different spot, maybe higher or lower. Be aware of that. Um, so uh, you might have to do testing to find out exactly where it is. But in case, there we go. Plug it in. Uh, supply voltage across uh, the two of them. We're going to send our signal since we just did that with this uh, wire right there. So jumper wire. I use. I like to use uh, green if it's a signal orange whatever I try to avoid using red and uh, I don't have black but I got blue um I usually use blue for negative uh, supply power and uh, so I try not to use that one if it's a signal now we got that squared away we need hundred thousand ohm uh, resistors and I got two of them down here pretty sure they're hundred thousand um no ten thousand sorry yeah ten thousand red so um, that's one reason why you get a little familiar with the color code, even if you don't memorize it. Um, you can, uh, I could tell that was 10K because it's a red band. 100K would have been an orange band. So that goes to the inverting input. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the long explanation, but the schematic symbol, the inverting input might be below the non-inverting. Minus might be lower than plus. But on the physical component, if you're using the three uh, LM393 right there, the inverting input is always above the non-inverting. Got to pay close attention to that. Not where the position is on the schematic. Where it is on the actual component. If they flip it on the schematic, you have to take that into account when you're wiring the circuit. So there you go. Equal value. There's no polarity. Doesn't matter which way you put them. Although, um, we got the red band on the left there. Technically, that's backwards if you're reading the color code. Um, but... Uh, we're just going to kind of quickly snap this together. I'm not going to try to make everything perfect. So we have our uh, transistor there because uh, we're going to switch a transistor. So I'm actually going to need another uh, 10K resistor. Hold on. So now, while I was grabbing uh, the 110K resistor for the transistor, I realized I probably want a pull-up resistor too. We may get away without it, but uh, again, we may not. So um, let's wire to the output and these are kind of bent. I should have straightened them a little bit. Not sure how well they'll go in. Not well at all. So I'm gonna show you that really quick since I have the uh, the players 
right there. So um, when they get bent out of shape, these are kind of thin. I know they're hard to see. Um, I just take the pliers there and I straighten them that way right there. And uh, you can kind of wiggle them at the end, but usually I just kind of uh, flatten the whole thing as much as I can kind of spin around it. And uh, then they tend to go in better. These have uh, thin leads because I bought them cheap. I might compare uh, the uh, 220 ohm resistors with uh, some that I got elsewhere. See uh, if uh, one's stiffer than the other. But in any case, there we go. Uh, we got the 10K there. So I'm not going to add the pull up resistor yet. And uh, this should probably work just fine without it. But again, it may not. We may need it. And uh, so we got the LED there because the output can pick up uh, stray signals. And uh, 220 ohm resistor, make sure you put the LED in the right way. Again, I'm doing this for absolute beginners. Uh, long lead anode needs to be towards the more positive side. Short lead the cathode if you haven't cut them. Short lead, uh, pretty sure that side also has a shaved edge on some LEDs, not LEDs. And then I'll go to the negative supply. It can be right next to that positive jumper as long as uh, we don't touch. So yeah, there we go. We got 220. And um, now uh, let's do the pull up uh, resistor. And I'm gonna actually move this over one spot right there and just uh, do the pull up to or from the output to the positive supply over there sharing sharing the same hole as uh, the positive supply of the rail right there and then our signal now I didn't apply power yet um, that's one way you can kind of uh, fry things by accident we gotta go to that middle pin and now we're going to the plus input again remember on the schematic Plus may be above minus, but on this physical component right there, plus is always the uh, lower one right there by the output. So yeah, we should be uh, completely wired up right now. And um, so the output just switches the transistor. I'll get the power supply. So the uh, power is, uh, is actually it's on. I meant to uh, turn it off, but um, I can turn it off. Just press the power button. Right there that turns the output off not the uh, unit and now I can wire up also you notice I got the maximum current set to 20 milliamps of current so even if uh, I apply power and um, miswired something or even if I wired up while power was applied I got current limit enough where probably it won't damage anything if I screwed something up so we got it off now um, there's no blue LED to indicate the output is low um, actually, yeah, the red LED lights up when the output's low. So LED should light up right there because we're switching a PNP bipolar junction transistor. And um, now uh, we can get an estimate of the uh, current flowing too. Remember, that is the LED current. Plus, uh, it's a 10K resistor, but there is a little bit of current flowing through there. And uh, that voltage divider. And uh, maybe we got something going on because we left inputs floating um, but I, I don't think so I don't think it'd be a big deal so that's a low input turns PMP on and then a high right there so actually yeah there is a, a middle ground region where you can see the transistor is uh, I'll dim dim that lamp transistor doesn't go right from on to off so yeah we probably would want to uh, use remember it's uh, the signal is being amplified so if we're going right to the output it would uh, to be a lot harder to fade it uh, but we can uh, you know get it uh, where it's uh, not conducting quite as good and uh, then the LED will fade um, so you probably want positive feedback so that the output is a solid high or low um, but uh, you know not required it's okay as long as you're fine with uh, this fade you don't need a instant on and off and uh, with a digital input you would still get an instant on and off but uh, in any case again went on really long because I meant this for absolute beginners but uh, still hopefully you enjoyed I uh, covered extra stuff and then I normally would if I was just trying to say something quick to show the circuit um, which again is the non-inverting comparator using a comparator integrated circuit same symbol as the op amp something to be aware of but look up the part number and if the component this is this is a dual comparator if the component says comparator then don't expect to be able to get uh, both supply voltages or uh, usually a lot of times the output uh, for many integrated circuits outputs from the positive but still transistors lose some of that voltage other ones can get you that full voltage at low current and so on um, but yeah that comparator means don't use it as an op amp 
op amps you can use as comparators. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.